hi and welcome back to another video of jplay i am marcus and still sick like a dog actually i was really recovering from my cold but then i went to essen and i don't know what happened really spent enough time to recover but really don't feel well that's the reason why i think we'll keep this video or this episode for today relatively short nevertheless here i am playing fortune and glory i promised this to my patrons for quite some time doing another run of fortune and glory here i decided to go against the order of the crimson hand and yes of course i'm still playing with the so-called i think complete rules that they are i also decided to play this game solo and i believe that's the very first time i'm ever playing this game solitaire so i have no clue how well this goes but yeah, let's see how things are going. There are some slight changes to the solo mode. You get more dice when moving, for example. I think we have to recover um, 15 glory, a uh, fortune in order to win this game. And then again, make it back to uh, our yeah, basically home count, hometown. Whereas the wild organization have to make it all the way here to 20 on this, I don't know, danger villain track. I think the villain track, that's what it is. If I do any rules mistakes today, it's really simply because of the mat. So a little disclaimer up front. We already have our first um, villain on the board here and that's the Inquisitor who has a search rating of five a combat rating of only three that's okay he's a fanatic he gains plus one combat for each wound he has taken overall he can take eight wounds so that's really something but this is really something not so sure I, I can remember maybe two times three times I was ever able to defeat one of those villains and then they really go back in a KO state which is usually a good thing but yeah, in this case, um, I'm pretty sure I will not be able to make it against the Inquisitor. Our second villain, yes, even in the solo game, there are still two active villains on the board. At least this is the way how I understand it. It's Angelica Hamilton, Queen of the Silver Screen. Her search value is a four, her combat is a little bit better. The problem is she's vindictive. Heroes in her space treat all tests as deadly so all normal axes becomes those red axes that's really something i'm kind of in a good situation that she's not yet on the board but she will be at the end of this round our second big problem or yeah that was actually the first problem is that one of our starting adventures was a temple in china here and the temple is the tomb of darkness it comes with eight gold here um i think there are no real actual special rules to this no of course there's some flavor but i think let's not spend too much time reading this flavor on the other hand there is really not that much flavor text in this game here and a friend of mine actually complained about this as, oh i would really love to see more text on this card but to be honest it's all about the imagination you have those cool stills and some short line it's really about you or on you coming up with the story at least this is how i feel about it so i think i don't need too much flavor text in fortune and glory in this case it's a very graphical game but yeah they can really take eight fortune out of this one and eight fortune is at least two um, steps on a villain track keep in mind for every three they collect they will advance the villain track by one and if they will also be able to get the last one they get the temple as well which counts as a normal artifact and in this case yeah they will advance uh, even more to that so here i'm really in a tough situation if i should go there or not and basically compete so that they're not getting all the stuff um basically out of this because these are really every success he rolls he's able to collect one fortune which goes straight to the vile organization and three times he rolls basically three um fives uh at, when when doing when going there um yeah he then collects a first victory point or <laughs> the first step on the villain track. So I think this is really something I have to be careful about. But who am I? You might ask. And I'm Jake Sane. First of all, I honestly never played as Jake Sane. So the flying ace. So I think this is definitely cool for me. 
but I've chosen him out of I think three or so I, I drawn randomly. First of all, I didn't want the same characters I used from, from the last playthrough. And on the other hand, I think he can be pretty helpful when playing solitaire. Of course, his last um, ability more or less is void because there are no other heroes, but at least there are other villains. Um, so when he goes there, so I have basically now a driver moving to the temple here because there is a villain present and this villain could help me. But on the other hand, he's really this important piece. He may spend glory instead of fortune to fly between cities. And I think this is really, really great if you have to make, yeah, um, a lot of distance. Problem is I don't have any glory at all, so I cannot go there right off the bat. So that's kind of a pity. And yeah, I get four plus four adventure dice during any flight tests, apparently. Of course, I'm also playing with a personal missions. So I was able to draw two and keep one. And here we have the armor collector, recover an armor artifact. Apparently there aren't any armor artifacts out there yet. So I have to wait for that. But I think this is something, yeah, we deal with it when it comes out. Plus, plus one defense is always nice, apparently. But yeah, let's let's see how things go. Sooner or later, we will most likely see an armor artifact. Now let's get cracking, I guess. Before I make the decision if I want to go to China or not, let's roll our movement dice and see how things go. In the solo game, I get to draw two, uh, uh, roll two dice and basically choose one which to resolve. The good thing is if I roll any doubles, I get an event card plus the event card for the one if I decide to take one. So if I roll two ones, then yeah, the decision is easy and I get two of those um, event cards. And those are usually not bad. I'm pretty happy with that role, to be honest. First of all, I can move a lot, but what I think, what's again, what's, what's really more important, I get to draw an event card. How nice is that? And here we have, if I could just reach. Play to immediately take any ally or gear card from a discard pile. Okay, I can still keep it. So if there will be a discard pile, I could use it later on. Or choose any unsold common item and roll a d6. Take that item if the roll is equal to or greater than its listed cost. A roll of six will always succeed regardless of the item's cost. Ooh, that's tempting. Let's have a look at some of those common items actually. And actually I found one. That's a pretty humble one to be honest. The hunting knife. It only costs three. So if I roll a three or not, so I can choose to play it right now and I think I will do that now. I think the hunting knife is cool. First of all it gives me plus one combat. Always nice. But I can also get plus two adventure dice if I discard it. So I think, yeah, you call that a knife. And yeah, equal to a greater. Yeah, let's let's roll for this hunting knife. So I play this card. Let's roll a die. Let's let's do it like my good friend Cat Weasel does it, and take a die that has proven itself. So this rolled a five before. Let's see. We only need a three in this case. And yes, it rolled a five again. So yeah, you get a special space next to our board. Awesome. So we were able to get our first card here. I think that's pretty nice. Awesome. Yeah, let's let's totally hold on to this. So this event card is already discarded. Very, very nice. And now I have to make a choice. With a five, I should be able to easily make it here to the Caribbean. Yeah, one, two and three. So I could go after this golden one here. What is it? Let's let's have a look at it. Let's let's take it out. It's the amulet of the damned. It's a cursed one. After completing each danger here, roll a d6. On the roll of one, two or three, take a wound. That's a pretty nasty one, actually. It gives us four fortune, not terrible. Um, it only has three danger. On the other hand, I think I counted and I should be actually able to make it to China if I'm not mistaken. So that's one. Two, we make it into the Pacific crossing. So we are over here. That was two, three, four, and five. We can make it to China. And this temple is in China. It's not in Hong Kong. And not why I think I could even make it to Hong Kong. So overall, there is a good chance I could go after this. And at least I would be able to take some of this stuff away. On the other hand, the amulet of the dam could be something I could achieve in the very first round actually and then I could gain some glory uh, but overall those are really 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 a lot of fortune and, and steps on the villain track they could get so at least 
or up to three for the fortune coins alone here in the temple and of course another two for the temple so for the artifact itself so this could be up to five and i think i have to do something for this really really a very bad start starting with the temple oof, yeah really forces you to do stuff but i think yeah let's let's go for it so i will move coming here that was four that is five so i'm here at this temple i think it's not something deep no it's mountains actually here at the chinese wall and i think think here yeah, we have to go after this yeah let's let's totally do that we have a combat now a plus one he's not so tough so that's at least something so i could try to sneak by and even and if he does find me when i when i push on or press on i should be able to survive this for a round or two and at least i need to take away some some of those fortune coins i think that that's really really key okay let's move into the adventure phase let's draw our very first card again we are drawing from the bottom of this enormous deck i shuffled the hell out of this so you have to believe me um, i will not do that again like others do that this is my sh uh, shuffled pile believe it or not and again i will take it from the bottom and yes i will totally again or still play with the card from tristan who was so amazing or did some amazing job in coming up with some more alternative of those uh, danger cards here okay let's see what we get and actually here we did draw a card from tristan and it's a mean one the dead end wait a second there's something unnatural about this dead end and wow that's so bad a lore test of six plus i only have a lore of two so i will be rolling two dice so i can make a choice now to discard my hunting knife right off the bat actually because if i'm not succeeding i go to the cliffhanger of this card apparently and put a danger marker or a collapse marker on the temple on the other hand that's also not a really bad thing because it could also make the temple go away and will affect the um, baddie here too the problem with the tomb of darkness is that it has a danger rating of five so usually you only roll the die the collapse die or check um, when there are five um, of those collapse mark or instability markers or whatever it is i believe the thing is if i um, basically go to the cliffhanger i roll right away so overall this is really actually a win-win situation of course i could be um affected by this too but does this really hurt me too much actually i think not actually but on the other hand if i would have been um, now knocked out i will lose my knife anyway so i think yeah let's let's spend the knife to gain two extra adventure guys i got this knife for free so i will put it back to the common item deck so i think that's never a bad thing so i will roll four dice now and yeah let's go for the two one we already know and yeah let's take two more greenish ones i think overall that's not too bad maybe they only can roll fives i don't know i have to test this so i need a six and i cannot um basically um what is it exert i believe i can only do that after cliffhanger but i think for now that's fine so let's roll those dice and yes wow we made it actually that's not bad at all great so we passed our first test which means we have in theory three glory waiting for us and we will totally get one fortune from the temple so we have already one fifteenth victory in our hand so that's not a bad thing so i could now press on um then there is a chance i will lose this thing of course we have to place a danger marker um, on the temple so that we know when there are five on them we have to roll for collapse and if i want to press on of course i have to sneak by the villain he has a search rating of five and for each uh, number that matches my i have to now name a number from one to six and i roll those five dice and yeah for each number he got right he will have to fight me for a fight round and i think yeah let's totally go for another one yeah let's do that so five was my lucky number so far so i will announce five and again if one or more of those dies then show a five i have to fight the baddie they usually have minus one adventure dice for each guy that there are here the thing is i think this only counts when they're actively searching for the artifact i may be wrong here but i will not cheat my way through here so let's roll those dice so five it is and yes i do have to fight one fight round against 
this bad one. I roll four combat dice. He rolls three actually. He doesn't have any defense. I think that's kind of a good thing. So now it would be great to have a knife, huh? Don't you think? So I roll the green dice here again and every four, five, six counts as a hit for now. Again, hits are wounds for them because again, he doesn't have any defense. That's not terrible, actually. That's not terrible. So he takes three wounds. Combat is simultaneous. So um, yeah, he's not getting the extra wound um, or dice for the wound he has. And wow, he hits me twice as well. So those are twi two hits. But because I have one defense, I only take one wound, which for now is pretty much okay, actually. So let's put it here so I don't forget what the number actually was. And I have basically fought my one combat round. So I have to go to my next danger, which seems to be a wild beast. You have stumbled into the beast's hunting ground. Outrun it, outsmart it, or stand firm. Okay, I think those are the infamous Chinese, um, I don't know, rhinos, I guess. Wow, I have to make a choice. I think my best bet would be with combat or with agility. Uh, I have four agility. And I could also go with cunning. Problem is I only have two cunning. So no, let's go with agility because I only need one success here. So I get to roll four dice again. And again, we are looking for a six. This is really not looking good, but I could gain four glory. And I think then it's, hmm, I'm not sure. Oh, of course, I failed badly. And again, I will now go to the, um, Oh, I got to forget it. This is the Mads speaking out of me. The cliffhanger side, of course. It seemed like a good plan at the time. No, not so much. So next, I simply take D6 wounds with no defense and most likely I will be out of here. But I have to do that during my next adventure phase. I will not be able to move away. Kind of a good thing is that we will now add one collapse marker. So first of all, we remove the danger marker here and we'll add a collapse marker, which also means we have to roll right off the bat. Uh, basically the amount of uh, dice equal to the collapse markers right now that's a one and if this shows a one then we actually the temple collapse and this could actually help us because again we have taken at least some fortune out of this so maybe it wasn't that bad of an idea and you know how good or bad i'm rolling no that's a five unfortunately the temple is not going to collapse but i think that's still okay um, and this was the end of our round. Yeah, we have to remember that we have to deal with this rhino or we will be trampled. Of course, all the glory is gone out of him. And then we move into the villain phase. The first thing that you would do is to see if there are any or if there aren't any dark sanctuaries on the board. Right now we have one here and the devils reach down there. So we are not spawning another one. The next thing to do is to draw a villain event card. So let's see what we get. Attacked at sea. Any hero in a sea space immediately takes D6 hits. Apparently we are not in sea space. We are in a mountain space in China here. So we dodged that bullet. This was actually a pretty good villain event card. Can't believe it to be honest next thing is that the outpost will do something and here we would roll during the outpost step which we are roll a d6 for each dark sanctuary on the board on the roll of four five or six place a crimson hand acolyte figure on the artifact event with the lowest fortune value and no other acolytes there if all artifacts blah 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 then we would start spending so they will also start collecting those um fortune which is really really a terrible thing again right now we only have one dark sanctuary on the board so let's hope for a low roll here one two three and yes can you see it no you can't this was really two apologies okay we are not adding any acolytes that's I think already a good thing next we move into the um, villain step so the inquisitor will now search for us actually I think ah, I forgot something actually Oh yeah, I forgot. Um, I think I rolled three hits against this guy, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's absolutely the case. So yeah, first of all, he gets um, basically three wounds for that. 
But because I inflict two hits, I get one glory for each of those. I think this could help us, but I think I will be defeated anyway. And this is not part of the danger I didn't pass pretty much. This is really glory I get right off the bat. But yeah, now he will collect or try to find the temple here. He will now roll only five dice because um, I'm at a location with him. Normally he would roll um, five. Um, he would roll five dice, I have now four dice because I'm with him. And again, each four, five and six counts as a success. Those are two successes, which means he will grab two pieces of gold. I will place those onto this handy dandy villain board here, which you can find on the Geek apparently. And I'm using this for quite some time already. And of course we have to place two collapse markers onto the temple card. So three more and we add another collapse marker here and then yeah, we would have to roll again with two dice and each one then counts. But yeah, in this case, the temple is still doing pretty much okay actually. And now we come to the end phase. So usually now the acolytes would also start collecting those artifacts, but there aren't any acolytes out there on the board. So we don't have to respawn any um, artifacts yet or adventures yet because we haven't collected any of those. So I think we can move directly into the next round. And I think I will still do this today because I'm only facing this um, cliffhanger. And yeah, I think, yeah, let's, let's go for it. Over to the movement phase. I still get to roll my movement dice, even though I'm not allowed to move away. I can still roll those two dice because I could still gain an event, for example. This event may be helpful for my little problem here. And yes, that's actually a one and a six. Of course, apparently I will go for the one in this case, which again gives me yet another event card. And here we have two close, almost there. Play to force a test just re rolled to be entirely re-rolled. This may be used on yourself or another hero or villain. Very nice, really very, very nice. Great card, I really must not forget those. And it doesn't help me because it's a test and the d6 wounds I'm about to take are apparently not a test. So yeah, in this case, but I will still try to hold on to this. So let's roll low in this case. So let's have a last look on this rhino here. Um, take d6 wound with no defense problems. I already have one wound. So if I roll four or more, I'm basically toast. And then I will most likely also lose my glory. Okay, yeah, let's see. <laughs> of course it's a six. Now I'm rolling good. So yeah, I'm definitely defeated. So I lose all of my wound tokens. I have to roll again. I will never be able to lose any fortune I have um, when playing solo. Um, that's a good thing about it. But if I roll now, I don't know. Uh, more than a one, I will lose basically all of the glory I collected. And yes, of course, all the glory is gone and now I have to respawn. As I'm playing with the standard rules, I will be sent back to my hometown, which is San Francisco lying down. So I will not really participate. The good thing is I can still play event cards, but man, this was really bad. And of course I will not get this um, extra glory here. Ah, this was really a terrible adventure. Wow, are you kidding me? Yeah, that's actually the end of my round. Let's move over to the Vile Organization again. We have to draw the villain event first. And here we have the Vile Tactics. Roll once on the Vile Organization's Tactics chart. Move the villain step one step forward. Evil has a way of spreading quickly. Let's start with the first part here. So right now they don't have any bonuses. They get special abilities when they collect certain type of artifacts. One of those gives them a plus one, I believe, or plus something on, on this roll here. Four to five would be great actually, because every hero immediately fight a dark creature's enemy. We are lying down, so we are knocked out. We are not participating in that fight. One, two, three, not great either i believe so yeah let's see what it is and it's a six plus are you kidding me 
Oh, bad, 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 bad. Draw a random villain to become an additional active villain, placing the villain card near the vile organization's record sheet with a figure in the ready state. This new villain is considered to be part of the Crimson Hand faction in addition to any other faction they may be a part of. If this villain successfully collects an artifact or is KO'd, discard them from play. They are no longer considered an active villain. Woo, you must be kidding me. And one thing I also forgot at the end of the last round actually is to deploy Angelica Hamilton because she was definitely active at that already at that point in time. So where she, would she have gone to? She would have moved to the Hammer of Osiris, which is actually here in Germany. Oof. Okay, so she will also start collecting. Wow, we are really in a bad shape, guys. Okay, let's see what additional villain we get. And here we found Franco Fedici with a search value of 5. Anytime he would take a wound, roll a d6, ignore that wound. Okay, he has some bodyguards, wounds 9, ambition gains, plus 1 combat for each artifact the villains have. Okay, this will be not that big of a deal. But yeah, he will be an, uh, basically an inactive villain now. So we will go here. He will be ready. So he will be deployed right after those guys actually. And yeah, I think... I think that was dead. Oof, now we do the outpost step. So again, we are rolling this die and we are hoping for a low result. Um, let's take this six die away here for sure. So we are looking for one, two, three, actually. Yes. Okay, awesome. We are doing good. Again, no acolyte, but we have now three villains on the board. I think that's even worse, to be honest. And now we come to the villain step so again we start with the Inquis inquisitor in china so let's see he's not getting any penalties now so we are looking for four fives or sixes or basically we are looking for one two and threes for us and those were two success i think hmm no let's not have him re-roll that so he will take two more fortune from this temple which also means we're adding two more danger markers to the temple this means we are adding one coin two coins so basically every three get cashed in so they are at yeah one coin left and this gives them an, an additional step on the wheel and track and yes i gave them the extra step for the wild tactics card apparently and that was the inquisitor then it's angelica hamilton <clears throat> at the hammer of osiris here in germany um, she needs six successes to make it. So she will roll four dice. I think there are no bonuses. No, that's only for the other heroes, for example. So yeah, four, five and sixes to count. Those are two more successes. Do I want them to re-roll that? No, I think not. Two is okay. So yeah, they will add two successes for them. I will basically put them next to Angelica so that we remember. And last but not least, we have Franco Fedici who will move to the next highest adventure, which is the Amulet of the Damned here in the Caribbean. And yeah, he will not search for, for any treasure right away. Oh wow, what an awful second round. The first one was kind of okay, but now things are really going wrong left and right. But yeah, you know my playthroughs, that's how I like it. Yeah, getting kicked in the face by a board game. Awesome stuff. I believe that's all we have to do do because again there aren't any acolytes on the board who would now start collecting any of the artifacts out here and yeah overall i can only hope that my next round will be a little bit more successful so i will be fully healed now by the way or i will stand up so i'm no longer delayed so i can start moving again and whew, in theory, I would move in here, to be honest now, because I think the temple is now gone, actually. So there's really not much I can do there. There are still three more hmm, things, so maybe I should still consider it. Maybe I should not give up too easily on that, to be honest, because that's easy money, to be honest, or easy fortune you can get and take them away from them. So I think hmm, overall, let's think about it. 
But yeah, we have to get there anyway. We have to roll a five again in order to make it. But yeah, I really hope you enjoyed my first episode of my fortune and glory. Really sorry for all the hiccups here, but again, blame it on my cold and the mats I'm taking against it. Again, a huge shout out to all of my patrons. Really appreciate all of your support, guys. Keep it coming and hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And until then, bye bye. <laughs>